All right, welcome back to XCOM 2. This is the class guide for the Sniper. Probably the class with the most damage potential of all classes. And let me be clear, I really like the Sniper. Um, it's probably one of the few classes uh, that is just shining um, in most of the missions. It's so strong. Um, I really appreciate that class. However, that being said, the sniper starts out as relatively weak and becomes uh, stronger over time. Um, let's take a look. It's the typical hyper carry uh, class. And you can play it in two ways. I'll give you an overview about how I'd like to play it and what the rationale behind it is. Uh, it has two paths, the st standard sniper and then the gunslinger path, uh, which is inspired by XCOM 1 Long War, by the way. Uh, in original XCOM, it only had the sniper path, and then people like try to, uh, to play it as gunslingers. So, two things uh, that the sniper has. Squad side, which allows the sniper basically to uh, see every enemy that the squad sees and even uh, is able to shoot at them, although it's uh, normally not adjacent. Gunslinger. Um, uh, offers the sniper the unique ability to have the pistol as the um, sidearm, which is a great thing. Uh, later, that is becoming very, very strong. Now, on the corporal level, after you uh, level the sniper once, you get the um, selection between two mediocre talents. The sniper, I would say, starts to be great after sergeant and the buff. Keep that in mind. I said it was a late blooming class. It really starts to be strong within the last three levels. However, there are also some, some good abilities in Sergeant and Lieutenant rank. So, Corporal rank. You have either Long Watch, which allows you to take Overwatch shots even if you don't see the enemy directly. Uh, so your squad side then can also trigger Overwatch. Or secondly, Return Fire. Now here's a clear winner in that tier. Uh, in my perspective, long watch is mediocre. This one here is abysmal bad, so you don't. Uh, you probably want to go with long watch. Why do I have such a clear view on this? So long watch um, offers you certain te uh, tactical flexibility. You want to be more careful when you enter the Overwatch with your sniper and you don't see any enemies or you're scouting out enemies with, let's say, um, uh, an assault or even uh, with another like scouting uh, class such as if you play Long War, uh, Long War Two, such as the Shinobi or um, such as the Reaper in War of the Chosen. Now, these are the typical scenarios where technically you wouldn't um, you wouldn't trigger Overwatch, but since you have Long Watch, this class would still try to tr uh, trigger the pack. Uh, that's a that's a feature that you need to be aware of. In some of the cases, it's a great way of laying Overwatch traps. So you kind of keep your men like on the edge of not being seen, put everyone into Overwatch, have this one scout in, a, in the front, and, um, and then effectively use the sniper to quote-unquote pull the enemies on their turn. That gives you a distinct advantage because on their turn, the enemies only have a movement ability. They can only move so, so, so fast into your direction and you will get a free turn. And you know what? I just decided to make a couple of videos of typical tactical play because I think it's way easier to understand. Um, so, why is returning fire bad? Um, returning fire, if you look at it, can only be triggered once per turn. Mm -hmm. Uh, can only be uh, triggered by direct attacks against the sniper, and then uh, will um, uh, uh, the the sniper will ultimately just fire back with his pistol. Now, you never want your sniper to be attacked in the first place, which means if returning fire is triggering, you have done something wrong. You as player have done a mistake. You shouldn't be in a situation where the enemy is even allowed to attack you. A good scenario is always when you kill the enemy before they can have at least one attack against you. That's the flawless uh, gameplay that you should strive to, right? So this ability therefore does not give you anything and even if, if you fail to have this flawless execution, it only allows the sniper to take one shot back. In most of the cases, this is not a really good ability. Back on track, what are the next abilities? Dead Eye, which allows you every five rounds uh, to make a devastatingly strong attack, which I think is plus two or plus three damage at the expense of minus 10 to hit. 
It is very strong in the later parts of the game, and it is specifically strong if you're just around the edge of being able to kill an enemy, but you can't make sure that it's a 100% kill. Now that eye can pull it over the edge, and therefore is a good ability. I would give it a solid orange, uh, so an ability that you can uh, skill, but it is clearly weaker than the Lightning Hands ability. The Lightning Hands ability allows you to, without spending any action, fire your pistol as a free shot, has a four turn cooldown. Now, pistols become incredibly strong, specifically since they benefit from the ammunition that you have loaded. Um, if you can uh, load ammunition such as blue screen rounds, and you have later pistols that even ignore armor, uh, you can easily, easily dish out between 13 and 15 damage against mechanical constructs, just with a pistol shot. Okay? If you get an ability that is for free and doesn't take you any actions, get it. It is a no-brainer. There is no downside to it. The greatest part about Lightning Hands, it is just having a cooldown and no restriction. You can use it as often as you like. Highly recommended. Very, very green ability. Next up, Death from Above with this quick, uh, quick draw. And here we do have a tie between two incredibly good abilities. One becomes really good later in the game and one is always good. Now you heard what I said about pistols. Let's start with quick draw, which is an always good ability. Firing your pistol does no longer end your turn, which means you basically have two shots. Since the pistols with blue screen rounds, in some cases with two pistol shots just deal more damage than one shot from your sniper. Plus the pistol never needs to reload, it doesn't have any ammunition, so you're not uh, going out of, um, out of ammunition with that either. The quick draw just means you have another action, and action um, is uh, action opportunities are king in XCOM 2. If you have more actions and you can use more things in an action economy, this is definitely worthwhile. So quick draw, highly, highly recommend to use uh, to use it during your leveling phase. As soon as you hit the point where you get a specific sniper, the sniper of uh, the chosen one. Uh, then Death From Above begins to shine as an ability. Death From Above gives you one action back, so it gives you a single action when you are killing an enemy on a lower uh, level. Now normally uh, shooting a sniper takes two actions, so um, that is only meant to give you a little bit extra oomph. But with the sniper from the chosen one, it only takes one action, which is incredibly, incredibly strong. So all of a sudden you can kill on and on and on and on. Hear me out though, there's another tip to it. Uh, you can use this ability even without the sniper uh, from the chosen one and basically combine it with the abilities, for instance, from the skirmisher, where you get an extra, uh, um, ability, uh, an extra action or with a bond of a bond mate where they can shift like one action towards you. So by killing something, you gain one action back. By gaining a second action from either uh, the skirmisher or a bond mate, you can shoot again. So even uh, without the ability, uh, without the special sniper, the death from above is already a pretty good ability. So I would go quick draw of a death from above, but once you have the right um, equipment, death from above is good, very good. Now, next up, captain. Face off versus kill zone. So there's one extremely good ability and one ability that looks good on paper but is often not worth it. Let's start with a very good ability, face off, uh, which I highly recommend you uh, you will take. Face off is an ability where you have an incredible, incredible amount of damage potential. You will see in many of my videos that uh, you should play the sniper with. Uh, grappling suit. So once you can go into um, into the second tier and third tier of armor, you should go for um, a grappling uh, hook and give that suit of armor to the sniper, because it gives you free movement without uh, using abilities, uh, without using a movement action, and it also allows you to position on high ground. Now, with that being said, there are many, many options where you can um, uh, pull yourself into a pack of enemies, like almost into the middle. You of, of obviously don't want to be stupid, but there are um, uh, positions where you can see all of the enemies and with face-off, you shoot once at every single enemy. Now, I have done uh, missions uh, specifically in the old XCOM where my face-off was hitting as many as 12, sometimes 13 enemies at once. 
and with a high caliber sniper that just knows how to hit and has a very high to hit, uh, you can dish out that amount of damage towards every single um, uh, enemy. Specifically with the pistol later in the game, uh, the unique pistol uh, from the chosen one, which you coincidentally get from the same chosen one, the hunter, uh, you ignore any armor. So with face off, you basically deal 9 to 15 points of damage to up to as many targets as you want. Keep in mind, even if you are in the midst of, uh, of the lost, even if you're in the midst of a really, really tense fight, face off just can completely obliterate the, uh, the, uh, the gaming field. You can deal over 100 points of damage on your terms in your turn. And the last two things are what separates this great ability from this mediocre one. Kill zone is an ability which uses your sniper as an overwatch and whenever something steps into the zone that you uh, designated before ending your turn you take an overwatch shot and you can take as many overwatch shots as your ammunition holds so with a normal sniper that's three plus uh, uh, superior expanded magazine so up to six shots per, uh, per uh, usage of the kill zone now on paper that looks absolutely stunning in reality it isn't uh, and hear me out why. A couple of the things. Number one, overwatch shots can't crit. So one of the biggest features, uh, at least not for this uh, uh, for this um, class, um, uh, this class, yep, I would, wanted to make sure that I'm not misinforming you. No. Um, this uh, The sniper, in contrast to the uh, specialist, cannot crit on, uh, on overwatch shots. So one of the biggest features of the sniper is disabled during uh, the kill zone ability. Secondly, the kill zone ability only has six shots in maximum, whilst face off can have way more. Thirdly, if things are not running through your kill zone, you have wasted your time. Fourth, you shouldn't bank your strategies on any form of overwatch unless it's an overwatch trap. But in which case, I already told you that the sniper is to be used in a different form. However, that being said, Killzone is not like completely useless. In some of the cases, it's actually okay. Uh, it's one of the abilities, you pull it off in about one out of five cases. When you can pull it off, you feel like the champ. In four out of five cases, however, you feel like pretty damn left behind. Major abilities, steady hand versus aim. Two abilities that are mediocre, um, uh, they just give a static bonus. One um, gives you the option plus two aim and plus two critical chance. It's almost like an extra buff. Um, earlier, when we played uh, before War of the Chosen, it was a great ability because like plus 10 aim and plus 10 critical chance is super good. Nowadays, since you can train all of the abilities specifically in the end game, it becomes a little bit more shallow. Uh, the other aim uh, function is if you hunker down, you gain plus 20 aim on your next turn. And whilst this looks okay on paper, um, I fail to see on timed missions specifically where you are actually going to use that. So not a very good ability. The two top abilities, uh, not surprisingly, are within the kernel tree. It's either Serial or Fanfire. And both are phenomenal. So if you have the chance, please skill both of them. Number one. Uh, let's start with Serial. Serial is kind of the capstone ability that everyone knows the sniper for. You activate Serial and whenever you kill something, you just gain back two, ability, uh, two action points. Super easy, super uh, strong. If you go with, um, with a superior, reload, uh, superior uh, reloading, uh, it means that you can shoot up to 12 times in a row without effectively the need to, uh, to, to break your Serial. So that's kind of the dream scenario. Uh, you can shoot and shoot and shoot. Specifically in the last mission, if you have high ground, it kind of allows you to dish out a lot of damage. No problem. That's great. It becomes a little bit less good since uh, Death from Above with the new sniper in War of the Chosen already emulates that to a certain degree. However, there's nothing more satisfying than a good old serial run uh, to kill a lot of the enemies. Great, and it doesn't require high ground, you just need to kill the enemy. Make sure that you, uh, that you are careful with the serial usage. You want to kill every single enemy with 100% chance, so account for dodging, account for, uh, for partial hits, account for misses, account for armor, and for the weapon damage. So you need to really clearly, uh, uh, clever, uh, cleverly plan this out, otherwise you break your serial in between. Um, secondly, Fanfire, an ability that doesn't end your turn, but shoots thrice with your weapon. I cannot stress how good this ability is on top of it. The, this class here with this ability 
um, in a in not even a full turn like lightning hands plus fanfire together can down a sectoid or a gatekeeper with blue screen rounds and a weapon that ignores armor you are just shredding through it uh, this here is usually between 38 and 50 damage against uh, mechanical units and both gatekeeper and, and sector port are the those and this is another uh, 9 to 15 so you easily easily kill them which means this this person alone in just one turn he, the, the keep in mind the character still has a turn left over afterwards could uh, decimate the iconic enemies in, um, in the end game very very strong and I highly encourage you to play the game so far that you do have a colonel sniper there is almost nothing as satisfying as having a really good sniper who can clean house and, and wipe everything um, off the, uh, the board. Please, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and comment it down below. Plus, uh, write in the comment section how you would differently skill your sniper. I hope you enjoyed it and see you in the other guides.